Hey everybody, and welcome back to a post-sickness episode of Starbound. <laughs> I've been gone for about a week with some serious upper respiratory sickness. I can't speak right now. But there have been some big updates to Starbound, and this should be really fun. I'm going to start the Danatoth Mark II prototype. And, as you can see, I've played some other characters in the meantime, including IRON THING! Another very fun glitch. So, some of the changes that have been made. Uh, the big ones. There's drills now, there's a grappling hook, uh, the whole leveling and armor penetration system is gone. Uh, which caused a rebalance of all the early worlds and stuff, and I really liked that. It was a fourth character wipe, but... Oh, look at that. Chunk's not loading in. So I appear to have some sort of delicious cotton candy cloud heaven tree. And a spinner beneath me. So, my house and everything is wiped. I figure I'm not gonna worry too much about building any permanent shelter in these episodes. I'm just gonna, you know... Make home on my ship, explore planets, kill things. Now that I've seen how often these character wipes are happening. But, I have to say, like, even with the forced restart, I was kind of happy about the forced restart. Just because the balance of things the first time through was... Not balanced, I think is the polite way to put it. Fun, but it had some issues. And playing through it this time has been a lot better. Um, I've got a server going. I've been playing with friends. It's rem The server is remarkably stable for something in such early beta. Sorry, just had to take a sip of my drink there. It was delicious. And... Like a spiky, angry dragon dog that moves. Spiky, angry dragon cow. An elusive creature. You could see the one in front of me, using its natural defense mechanism, starting to lazily fall asleep. Where its neck has a strange odd rotation as it reaches towards the ground. Mm. But yeah, let's see what's, uh, let's see what's on the surface of this planet. Actually, first I should probably get the, the basic stuff made so that I can start doing actual things. And I'm gonna to load all this stuff up onto my ship, so. I found that, uh, for at least, like, the first tier, there's a pretty good space-saving configuration that I like to go with. With the work table right there, and then you could put the, uh, the anvil and the furnace up on top of it. Got a stone pickaxe now. See, I haven't completely recovered from... Whoa. Building right on top of where I spawn in. I haven't completely recovered from being sick. I'm still mighty, mighty exhausted. But now that I actually have my voice back, I really, really wanted to get back into it. Then, uh, I think... We could just, like, start mining down. Knock out some background to give us some light. Actually, no. Scratch that idea. I want to see the surface of this planet. I keep double-tapping, trying to, like, do the light speed dash thing that I have on all my other characters. Really angry, like, baby Bulbasaur. I, I don't know why there are evil baby Bulbasaurs on this planet, but whatever. These things are friendly, even though they look like they've seen things. No. 
So we've got that one house to the left, a bunch of angry Bulbasaurs and cotton candy trees. Weird fat green birds on a uh, bright purple planet. I love Starbound. The, uh, I was watching Omnipotent Entity uh, do some coding for weaponry, and what it looked like he was doing was adding in a system whereby you could swing your weapon in any direction, so you could, like, stab a spear in whatever direction, kind of like it worked in Terraria. Um, it was, it wasn't working at the time, and he was working on it, but it was interesting to watch. Platinum, gold, and a bunch of pixels. That's a good find for not very far from where I teleport down. I should... The last, the last planet I started on, I consider myself very lucky because it had a toxic biome with those trees that you can cut down and the trees turn into plant fiber. Because you can use plant fiber to make bandages and bows and arrows and stuff like that. And uh, it gave me enough bandages to last me forever, really. I haven't made more and I'm in Sector X on that character, so... And Sector X is a strange place. Every, uh, all the other sectors are relegated to one threat level. And Sector X is just kind of their catch-all for all the in-game areas they haven't finished making yet. So it has some wildly disproportionate levels of difficulty and, uh, and resources. You should see the surface of some of those planets completely covered in diamonds. Kind of impressed. Oh, a cultist. A bunch of cultists. <laughs> I tried to save you, random person. But apparently, your life was just not meant to be. Your, your heathen chicken god clucks determined that that you just weren't worthy. So he sent those cultists after you. Was that seriously just like a random spawn event? Cultists? Just, oh no. See, he had a house with nothing in it, but, you know. I just wonder where the cultists came from. Doesn't seem like they should Oh, God, I didn't see the angry Bulbasaur. And, you know what? I think we'll call the first one there. A little short, but, you know, we got to know the planet. We got to know that there are crazy rabid cultists running around. And I'm back. A little tired, but I'm back. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and have a good night.